Hello again traders. Right, I am going to show you how I um, would have traded this doji here. Uh, don't often talk about spinning tops, dojis, whatever you want to call it. Uh, a candle with a, a very close open and close. It's uncertainty basically. It's a bit like an inside bar where the price can go either way. Um, I live and die by these eight, uh, these um, recent candles dashboards. You know, if you don't do anything else in your life, learn how to study, how to understand candles. They are, they will change your life. So uh, let's have a look at this uh, in, in uh, a closer perspective. Um, I could be trading now. The reason I'm actually making this video is because the new gold H4 bar has just printed. So that is, that is a brand new bar now. So, you know, if you just wanted to trade the breakout of that little bar there, then you just put the high, the low, the open and close on there and uh, and then trade the lines. So let's have a look at this cable. That's what I mean when I say trades are everywhere. So um, the H4 bar you can see there, uh, a doji. So all I want to do is put the levels on the recent uh, levels really. So if it broke up from there, it's liable to try and test the high. If it broke down from that uh, the close of that bar, then it's liable to go down. So we've got the high and low on there. Then we've got the uh, the close of the bar there, the lower, and the open of the bar. These scripts are readily available online. Mine are my own, so don't ask me to share them. But uh, I've got a link to some free ones, and Dean's done his. So uh, Dean's lines, if you look at that on my Twitter feed, best forex method. So, um, you know, you can put this level on there too, but it's going to try and break out of that last H4 bar because it's that's a test of a level over on this side and the push down is a test of a level on this side. And uh, consequently, it will want to retest those levels and break out again. So uh, let's put a vertical on the... Um, on the sorry, I've got distracted then. Some noise going on outside. Um, a vertical on the open of the new candle, so we know where we are when we drop down a time frame. Um, what else? On potential targets over here, might as well put on as well. So you've got all that effectively clear air or clear air there. That's the high of that bar there. Then you've got the flip zone close of uh, the green bar there and you've got the low of uh, that bar there and we'll, we might as well put a few of these in just to see if the price did anything we'll leave those highlighted so we'll put the low of that one in there and we'll put the low of uh, that one in there notice I've highlighted them so when we go down to the M5 we can see what's going on so here's the new bar that's the uh, close and the open, or the open and close, doesn't really matter there, what it says on there. And uh, then you can see you've got your RSI histo trigger. It's broken out, broke out there. It's pulled back, you could have uh, used M1 to potentially get in there. Uh, there's a 3CR that's caused the uh, pullback. You know what happens when you break a level of support, the price will pull back. Um, I would have preferred to have seen that 3CR broken with this candle here, which we did. Uh, remember I said yesterday the RSI histo for the faster time frames. Whoops, don't need that. The indicators. There. RSI histo. I put it down to 15. It isn't. Oh, it is currently 14 on there. Sorry. So I did change this template. So it kicks off early, the idea being that the uh, breakout levels and the alerts uh, will, once you've made your plan, if you like, you know, you know you're going in the right direction. If you wait for the break of the 20 level, it might be here, whereas, you know, you've got your plan in place, like I have here, a breakout of this level. So I don't want to wait for the 20, I don't need to. As long as I've got a valid looking candlestick pattern, then... Um, <clears throat> Then I'm ready to go. So if we move or put an additional vertical line in there, I hope that made sense. We know we've had this breakdown out of that uh, range, tiny doji range. We pull back, 
well, we could put the line there actually. <clears throat> and uh, you're watching this pull back, you're waiting for a, a potential move to the downside. We'll put one here as well because on here, although we wouldn't have been able to see that, but might as well do that. So just flipping between the time frames. So this was the early potential entry after the breakout of the low there. I just need to do something. Okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so um, I hope you understand what I'm saying. So basically, this level, we could fill that in so we remember where it is. That is the zone on that H4 bar. There it is there, the doji level. Looks tiny on there. Um, and all we're waiting for is a break out of those two lines with valid signals. Um, you can uh, go through the time frames gradually and see build up a plan. There's no green there, so I'd be looking for shorts really, as you can see there. That green is that just that little pullback. That pullback there, rather. And um, as you can see, we should be looking for shorts really. We've got uh, an uptrend. We've got a lower low being formed or a valid lower high when the low of that is broken. Remember, it was uh, just gone 10 in the morning when this happened as well, the H4 close, as I said before. So that's how I build up my trading plan. It's that straightforward and that simple. See, before the H4 close, we had all this activity. So they've taken out, brought in, you know, people call it a uh, bull trap and all that crap. But, uh, you know, they've just bought in the orders to the long side, buy, 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 and then they've just taken them all out, you know. And you can tighten up your down move. So, you know, it's not just a question of putting the lines on the chart and taking the trade when it breaks out. You want to take it with all the higher time frames. That's why I say MTF, multi-time frame analysis. It's critical to what I do. You will get used to it. All you can do is screen time. And hours and hours of planning and stuff like that and um, you know you can't you can't go wrong you know how can you go wrong you've just got to look uh, that's an up move been broken down you know what more can I say we've got I do lines like this as well where I want to see you know at that point there I'm telling myself I want to see red to the downside at this point here, I'm telling myself I want to see a bust pullback break and close. Now, there's no bust pullback break and close. That's your bust. This is your pullback going on. And once you've broken, broken and closed below the low of the bust, bust down, pullback, break and close below that low there. That is why I do stuff like this on my charts as well. To remind myself I'm waiting for... When we've got clear, I'm waiting for a red bar there, and I'm waiting for a red bar there. I'm looking for shorts, and I'm waiting for a breakdown of this up move and a breakdown of this up move. So, you know, that's another way of just visualizing a, a trading plan. If it was going to go long, you can't go long until all of this changes its uh, thing on the multiple time frames, and you turn green above the line. And we get a bust, pull back, break and close above the line. And then the price will almost likely be up here and it would have fulfilled all the higher time frame criteria. So I've gone off topic slightly, but it's about how I trade is about multi time frame analysis. So back to M5, we're looking at this breakout of that blue zone there. Either it's a long side up there and then everything else will agree on here on the multiple time frames or the long side, which was already preordained as it were, short side rather. And then we're looking at this breakout here, pull back and we go to M1 and we will get the perfect, perfect, perfect entries. Let's just double check where that H4 candle, 55, 56, 58, 60. So the H4 was roughly either one of those two or three candles there two hours broker time so it's 10 o'clock there's the h4 close that's a little pullback there and here are our triggers pink um rsi histo 14 breaks remember every break will give you a pullback eventually they exhaust themselves and down it went that was the early entry 
and you could have got uh, six pips out of that. That's the spread. But not to worry because I was looking for this later entry anyway. I wanted to be below that 3CR, remember. And there is the perfect entry there with by then everything's exhausted all the buyers are exhausted notice that you've got a downtrend on the m1 at that stage that you could draw on high low lower high lower low this is the exhaustion phase or swing four <coughs> excuse me swing one two three four and there's the pullback and it just didn't look back and then it's going through those levels we talked about broke that level with a close gone down to the next level h4 low had a play around there, broke it with a close, and then just crashed down. How many trades could you take out of that as a scalper after that break there? That's uh, 11 pips. No, five or six pips is all we want. So that's it. That's how we trade a breakout of a doji bar that we've got from our H4 dashboard. The other thing I was going to, well, I need to mention is. Um, you don't have to use the H4, you can use H1. But try and time it around that H4. So if you're looking at your H4 for an idea for trading, whether it's a big candle at supply or a small candle uh, inside bar or whatever, even a small candle that isn't an inside bar is still a breakout candle, H4 I'm talking about. But then you can look at the H1 and see what that's got to tell you as well. And you can look at, uh, you can trade the H1. I trade them regularly. So when I say... I've gone from getting one trade in the morning and then one at the end of the day to anything anything I want, really. Uh, there are 16 four-hour candles in the day. The six, uh, the six, 12, sorry. The six um, normal H4s, what I call the FX H4s, and then the six uh, metals H4s, you know, and then you've got all the H1s. And then you've got all the other strategies we trade. So, you know, um, teach yourself to understand what candles are telling you. Remember what this was, uh, H4. Just a little doji, easy to trade, because it's going to try and break out of the... The in, initial breakout has to be the open and close, up or down. And the um, ultimate target, as it were, is the high or low, because it wants to break out of them. It doesn't have to. But this is a high momentum period of the day. <clears throat> it's when all eyes are on the charts. The um, Frankfurt boys, the uh, British traders, getting ready to position the price, ready for, well, there's news today at 130 US dollar. And, um, you know, so they want to move it. They want to gather orders up here to, the, to sell. They want to gather orders, buy orders at a discounted lower price down here. So they're going to push it one way or the other. That's my thought process. Is Euro USD did the same. It's all probably. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I've got hay fever. <clears throat> um, it's all dollar related. Every move, even this uh, this shit coin. Excuse my French. Bitcoin and and all the other cryptos that are just toys. Um, all of them um, are re dollar dictated. So everything, all the indices here, everything moves with the dollar. So that's it. And it's all about positioning prior to news on news days. People say you can't trade it. Well, as you can see, we can trade anything. Little bars, great big bars, better full bars than uh, wicks. But um, we can trade the lot. You know, big bar into supply. What's it do? It's going to reverse more than likely. Or it'll break out, but we can trade it using the lower time frames. Anyway, that's it. Don't want to babble on anymore. How to trade a doji, how to trade inside bars, how to trade big bars, how to fill wicks. It's all there. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. How do I switch this thing on?